Hi everybody, welcome to our regular series of webinars, taking a particular topic all the way through to the final of exams in the summer of 2017. This session uh, is the YouTube version of our webinar. Uh, it'll last about 15 minutes focusing on business objectives. There's some questions to have a go at, and there's some key points and some key diagrams to advise along the way. So if you've got your notes on business objectives or class notes somewhere to hand, that might be handy. Press the pause button, come back, and uh, we'll click on. I'm going to start with a few a few minutes thinking about core business objectives that traditionally have been the main focus of the exam. All of our webinars are available on YouTube pretty much uh, an hour after they, they've taken place, so you can always come back. And if you've got a My Tutor to You account uh, on our website, you can download the presentation as well. So, business objectives. So of course, there are many objectives that businesses have, many aims at a given point in time. The traditional model says that businesses aim to maximise profits. They're optimising businesses that are seeking to, to find an output and the price where marginal revenue and marginal cost intersect. We know that the reality is very different. Firms are experimenters. Firms are at different stages of their growth and development. They operate in markets with more or less intensity of competition. And oftentimes they're run by uh, managers who aren't necessarily shareholders in a business. So there could be a conflict of objectives. But this slide provides you with a little overview of some of the key objectives of business. Profit maximization. Revenue maximization, of course, is where you maximize total revenue, and that's where marginal revenue is zero. A business might alternatively go for growth, fast growth, uh, accumulate and then protect market, sh market power, market share, from which long-term profits flow. So the, the top line is essentially the main core three objectives of most commercial businesses operating in the private sector. But we know that objectives vary, they're, they're very disparate. A lot of businesses in a recession, their main priority, their key objective is survival. And uh, that oftentimes requires good cash flow. Social enterprises, the likes of the Eden Project in Cornwall or Jamie Oliver's 15 restaurant chain or the big issue um, are not for profit or not just for profit businesses. They might have a whole range of social or environmental objectives at heart as well. And we know that there are many businesses operating in the state or the public sector. Uh, they may be run on commercial lines, but uh, they are likely to be narrowly focused profit maximizers. So what's the takeaway point from this slide? There are many objectives we see um, in different markets at different points in time. And you know the reasons, the rationale for those different objectives are summarised a little bit in the points on this slide. A key part of A-level business economics is to think about the possible divorce between ownership and control. Uh, the managers in a business, the purchasing managers, the personnel managers, middle managers and what have you, they may actually have a different objective from the shareholders. Perhaps the managers want to maximise their monthly paycheck uh, or perhaps they want to, uh, to, to collect a bonus at the end of the year based on sales, in which case revenue or sales growth might be a bigger priority than simple maximum profit. Second key reason why the objectives are different is that the firms may not necessarily have the information they need. Uh, they may not know what their marginal costs are accurately or the marginal revenues. A lot of firms actually in the real world operate cost plus pricing. They work out their average cost and they add to that a variable profit. You know, whatever it is, 5%, 10%, uh, depends I suppose on the elasticity of demand, isn't it? Cost plus pricing is, is, a, is a common tactic. Many small firms aren't profit maximizers, they're, they're, they're in the business of survival or just earning enough money to pay for the lifestyle of their owners. So owner managed businesses operating maybe a small dry cleaning business or a taxi company or a little maybe self publishing business, they're looking to make enough money to just to keep people afloat, pay the bills. And state owned corporations. I like to have a range of different objectives. For example, Network Rail, which runs the, the train infrastructure. Okay, so over to you on this one. This is where we bring a bit of interactivity to our webinar. Uh, there will be four questions. And um, if you're watching the YouTube version of this webinar, 
take a moment to press the pause button and have a think about what you think the answer is and I'll be back in, in a few seconds. Here's the question. When would the aim of a firm be most likely to be other than profit maximisation? When would the aim of a firm be most likely to be other than profit maximisation? I'll be back in five seconds with the answer. The correct answer to this question is B. And this again goes back to what we were talking about before about the agency problem. Uh, there were many, uh, well, there were just a few paid managers and there were many shareholders. It's likely to be that the, the, the share ownership of the business is, is widely dispersed and no one shareholder has any significant voting power in the business. So when you get very widely dispersed share ownership and the shareholders essentially are passive investors in the business, then that increases the, the market, uh, so that increases the decision-making power of, of the paid managers. Let's move, uh, before, sorry, before we move, move on to the second question, I've just checked in her slide if you want some revision notes on the agency problem. Uh, the possible conflict of interest between the shareholders, the owners, we call those the principals, and the management of a firm, the agents of a firm. Here's our second question in, in tonight's webinar. What action by a firm is most likely to raise its dynamic efficiency? I'll be back in a few seconds uh, with the answer. Well, I've had my tea, and here's the answer. That's D. Uh, dynamic efficiency, of course, is linked to the pace of innovation in a market, meeting people's changing needs and wants over time, and therefore a business which retains its current profit and ploughs it back into product research and development, for example, in pharmaceuticals or perhaps in, in, in an app, making money from an app and, and uh, put the money into researching an even better app, customer experience, that's going to lift dynamic efficiency in the market. Here's our third question, which is involved with a diagram. Uh, a monopolist changes its objective from profit maximisation to sales revenue maximisation. On the diagram, which areas represent the monopolist's total profit? See you in a few seconds. Okay, welcome back. Uh, what did you choose? The answer to this question is C. The original monopoly profit, if you follow my cursor, is where marginal cost meets marginal revenue. And that gives a price of P1. So the profit is P1, H, G, F. P1, H, G, F. Then the firm chooses sales revenue maximization as the objective so they go to output q2 which is where marginal revenue is zero or to sell the extra output they lower the price to k p2 the price falls to p2 the profit is now p2 k l f p2 k l f price minus cost multiplied by output so the answer is c here's our fourth question in tonight's webinar the table shows information about a profit maximizing firm. What can be concluded about the firm's behavior? Okay, what do you think the answer to this one is? This is essentially about perfect competition, actually, the price per unit is, is the same for all the units. The answer is B. It should close down immediately because it's not covering its average variable cost. The price unit is $1.70, the variable cost unit is $1.75. This, you may be, if you've done your vision, this is to do with a shutdown price. We assume that the firm um, can't recover the fixed cost of production if they close down. Therefore, in the short term, the key is to cover their variable costs in the short term. And hopefully do better than that and pay some of the fixed costs. If price is less than average variable cost and one dollar seventy is less than one dollar seventy five, then in theory the firm should close down because it's not covering its running costs. One of the key things in objectives is to think about the behaviour of firms in the real world. And whilst the textbooks might assume that firms are maximizers, they try and do the best they can from the available alternatives, they seek a profit maximizing price and output. The reality, actually, is that most firms are satisficers. 
Now, there's different versions of this on the internet. Satisficing comes from satisfactory and sufficient. In other words, businesses are hoping to make enough profit to satisfy the shareholders. Sufficient profit to generate the end of season bonus, what have you. Basically, instead of trying to optimise the whole time, um, they simply rely on simple cost plus approaches. They work out the cost and add a margin. Satisficers often are managers who are probably more concerned with prioritising revenue rather than just maximising profits. Three key diagrams coming up in the next couple of minutes just to take you through three different objectives that firms might have. The objective shown here is maximising revenue and maximising revenue is where marginal revenue is zilch, marginal revenue is zero this point here, this output. Just a little to the left, here is where you maximise your profit because marginal revenue meets marginal cost. But this is the maximum revenue where marginal revenue is zero. Go up to the demand curve, you can charge price P1, the cost is C1. So you can make some profit, but not as high a profit as if you maximise your profit. That's maximum revenue. Contrast with sales maximisation. Now, sales maximisation is when a firm tries to produce as much output as it can, grow its sales, grow the business, subject to the constraint that it needs to make at least normal profit. And you make normal profit by the average cost and the average revenue curve meet the break-even point here. It's shown here. That's where normal profits are made. It's a higher output. The revenue maximisation and of course involves a lower price. P1 is the same as cost, so you're covering your cost there, you're maximising your sales without making a loss. A third objective is sometimes called profit satisficing. Now there's no unique satisficing price in output, there's a whole range. It could be anywhere between the profit maximising price P1 through to the growth maximising price down here. So any, any price along this little range of the average revenue curve, the demand curve, is a possible satisficing price. This firm is basically saying, well, produce Q2, we'll sell at price P2, there's our costs. The green area is the tidy profit. It's not the biggest profit we can make, but who cares, it's a decent profit and it's enough to satisfy our shareholders and get ourselves a decent bonus at the end of the year. This is profit satisficing. Okay. I'm just going to run through these three diagrams very quickly again. Revenue maximisation, MR is zero. Sales maximisation, average cost equals average revenue. Satisficing any price which lies between the profit maximising price and the break-even price. Lots of options here. Just want to spend a couple of minutes with you looking at an actual example of a market where I think objectives will differ. The um, ah, is, is this elasticity? Who knows? The, the gym market in the UK has become really interesting. It's a contestable market. And uh, what's happened has been lots of kind of mergers and takeovers in the last year or two. Go back 5, 10, 15 years, this market was pretty static. Uh, lots of sort of cosy, middle-income, middle-class gyms that people used to go to. The market has been shaken up by the emergence of low-cost budget operators. Easy Gym was in there pretty early. Exercise for less, fit for less. Pure Gym is the biggest. Uh, some of them use a franchise model, Anytime Fitness, for example. So you've now got a much bigger number of gyms in the UK, uh, many of which are located in the big towns and cities. It's a more contestable market, and it raises interesting questions about the objectives of businesses in there. So there's a lot of product differentiation in the gym market. We range from the kind of no-frills, budget, low-cost, gyms, the basic core gym equipment, the exercise bikes, the handheld weights and things, occasional personal training, but basically pay as you go and maybe book online using an app, through to the mid-market gyms, the traditional gyms like uh, Cannons and Nuffield, um, where there's a range of both equipment and classes, and there's a creche and a pool and a, and a cafeteria, etc. Typically based on a membership scheme, monthly, quarterly, annual. All the way through to the premium, high-end luxury markets, the bespoke gyms, where everybody has their own shower cubicle and everybody has their own lane in a pool. 
very high quality experience, but obviously premium price. And in fact, oftentimes they don't tell you what the price is until you apply to join. The sort of gym is basically that wouldn't have me as a member. Now, what are we saying? We're saying here that you know, this market, this market is becoming increasingly crowded. Most of these businesses are, well, they're all private sector businesses. They're looking to make a return. Nuffield is actually part of the Nuffield Health Group, Nuffield Hospitals. So they're commercial businesses, but they aren't necessarily profit maximizers. My instinct is that most of those businesses are probably revenue maximizers and or growth maximizers because they're trying to establish for themselves as a position in the market from which long-term profits may flow. The, the number of clubs in the UK has risen to over 6,000 now. The number of to the traditional health and fitness clubs has been pretty static, as you can see, over the last six years. But uh, the, the top line here shows the growth, explosive growth of the kind of budget low-cost clubs. Now, they operate a low-cost model, they're profit-seeking, uh, they're commercial businesses, but I don't think they're necessarily profit maximizers in the short term. They've got longer term objectives in mind. Quite an interesting little case study, one to look out for, particularly if you're a member of a gym. Uh, those of you watching the YouTube version of this uh, webinar, I always leave a, a little slide at the end for key definitions. We've just published a definitions booklet, which is available on the website. Here are some key definitions of of objectives of firms. Profit max, revenue max, sales max, satisficing are four key ones we've covered tonight. So press the pause button if you want to just uh, check your notes on that. A reminder that our YouTube channel has all of our webinars and lots more besides, lots of short videos looking at particular exam questions. We're going to be ramping it up as we go towards the exam. We'd love you to, to subscribe and get involved. And also go to the website, sign up for another webinar happen every Wednesday night all the way through to the exams. They're free and it's great to see people joining in with the questions. Thanks everybody, thanks for joining in on this webinar. Uh, I hope that you found it useful and see you again sometime soon.